Welcome to Vegas Revealed episode 37. This week we are talking entertainment that is streaming right to your living room and hearing from stars like Matthew Bomer, John Cusack, and Millie Bobby Brown. Ooh, and we also have big updates in Las Vegas. Two new mega resorts open up on the Las Vegas Strip after being closed since the coronavirus restrictions. We're excited to tell you about that, plus some changes on how many people can be at events here in Las Vegas, which will really open up conventions again. All that coming up on Vegas Revealed. Welcome, everyone. It is time to talk Las Vegas. I'm Dana Roselli here with Sean McAllister, and we have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about today. Some Vegas related, some kind of has to do with entertainment as far as, you know, because a lot of us are still, I feel like, watching movies and TV at home or trying to get out to the movies a little bit now. Well, yeah, and, and that's the good thing is that movie theaters are finally starting to open up uh, across the country. And that means that new releases are not only uh, coming into our living rooms with Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, but they're also getting back onto the big screen, which is exciting. So uh, we have a, a special guest. Mm-hmm. Rachel Smith is an entertainment correspondent and uh, entertainment journalist based here in Las Vegas, and she'll be uh, joining us this week to to dive into all of her celebrity yeah. interviews. I always call her the junket queen. She's everywhere, you know, interviewing like the top of the top. So we're excited, and I always like to, to pick her brain about Tom Cruise, because he's like my favorite, which people People think is weird, but Rachel always gives me the dirt on if he's a nice person or not. Well, and I have a <laughs> feeling that she may have an update on the much anticipated Top Gun sequel. <sighs> I cannot wait. This is big. <laughs> this is big. All right. We have all that coming up, but also wanted to talk a little bit about um, Las Vegas and the Strip because Park MGM opened now, and it's interesting because they made it a no smoking hotel, and I think a lot of people are really on board with this. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's a long time coming. Yeah. I'm surprised that no other resorts have done that before now, but Park MGM is in a, you know, in the situation where it's the last of the MGM Resorts properties to open on the Las Vegas Strip. And they took this opportunity to say, you know what, Mm -hmm. we're just going to open smoke free, uh, which I think is a good thing. It's also the uh, most recently renovated of the MGM properties on the strip too. It's the old Monte Carlo, but it it reopened, uh, Oh, a year or so Uh, ago. I don't know. A little over a year ago. I'm bad with time because I feel like everything just blends into each other. But yeah, I think, I feel like it was around a new year's two years ago opening. It was the end of the year opening park MGM who opened there. No, it's at least two years ago. Cause lady Gaga has been playing there. Right. I went to the opening and it was, the girl from Fleetwood Mac? No, who was the opening? Yes, oh, I'm blanking. It was. Who was it? It was, a- it was um, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> Stevie Nicks, yeah. Stevie Nicks. Uh, that seems like a long time ago, so it has to be at least two years ago. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was. <laughs> see, I told you, it just all blends together. Man, see, this this whole like COVID shutdown quarantine <laughs> thing has just totally, as like turned my mind into an Etch-A-Sketch when time is I know. concerned. <laughs> I know. It might even be three years ago. So anyway, Google it, folks, and... and- <laughs> <laughs> You'll find but anyways, the answer. It's, it's nice and it's new. <laughs> it is. And it's right near the T-Mobile Arena. So I feel like it's a great place to go after or hit up before you go to a concert yeah. or event or a game or anything like that. So they were you know, itching to get that back open. And then maybe, possibly, we could have some... Some events kick in at the T-Mobile Arena. Our governor just changed some of the rules, allowing 250 people to gather instead of the 50, or what, 10% if it was a bigger, more than 2,500, 10% of that number. So I guess if there were like 60,000 people let in an arena, 10% could go in. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. So you can have, in large venues... Uh, you can have 10% of the occupancy, but those, all of those venues have to submit their safety plans mm-hmm. to the state and get approval on all that, yeah. um, which I would assume that they've been working on their, their reopening and right. safety procedures this whole time, you know, just in anticipation of the day when they could finally right. reopen. But this does pave the way for... Uh, you know, entertainment events mm-hmm. to start up again. It paves the way for uh, conventions 
to come back and yeah. start up again. But um, in those larger venues, I think that uh, what they're encouraging and what they're going to be the state, what they're going to be pushing for is for pockets of fans, not everybody all crammed together. Exactly. But still spread out in these large venues, but mm-hmm. it's still good news. Yeah, it is. Cause it means we're, we're on our way. I mean, I got an email from station casinos, which is are some of our ca- uh, casino hotels off the strip. And they said, Hey, we're allowed to, you know, have 250 gather so they can get those smaller groups that maybe they're, I don't know, spread out all over the West coast and they need a meeting place or something like that. So at least it's bringing business back. And then the U S travel association announced that the IPW, which is an like international inbound travel trade show, is going to be back September 18th of 2021. So at least folks are still keeping us in mind and ready to come back in 2021. And I also heard that the world of concrete. Oh, it's a, a big trade one. Trade show is planning on doing an in-person trade show. I believe that coming up in January and you see all the construction oh, equipment yeah. that's loaded into the convention center for that one. Yeah. And outside, they use a lot of the outside lots. So that's actually a really good thing, you know, because a lot of the show can be outside. I see all the equipment and, and it's always very visual. And concrete <laughs> is big business. It is. Listen, <laughs> we need it. Look at all the things that we have in Las Vegas. With I know. Concrete. I know. Um, Planet Hollywood's opening this week too, right. which is exciting because there were rumors that it would never reopen. You know how it goes on Twitter. People start talking. So we're excited to hear about that. Um, and and I know there's been talk about maybe someone buying it or this and that. But for now, no, Caesar says it's opening Planet Hollywood as is. Yeah, and they've had, uh, of course, there's the big mall, the Miracle Mile shops mm-hmm. that's attached to the Planet Hollywood Hotel and Casino. The, the Miracle Mile shops have been open uh, for a few weeks now, right. for at least a month, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so those shops have been open, but the casino itself and the hotel at Planet Hollywood have remained closed down. But yeah, as of October 8th, uh, Planet Hollywood will be back in action and, um, you know, bringing really, I believe that's just about all of the strip resorts that will be back open. I think so. We were doing this the other day, and I kind of, what I do visually is start at the the north end and, and be bopped down all the way to the <laughs> south, and I'm like, I think you're right. I think they are all open. Is the Cromwell open? I'm not sure about that one as far as hotel rooms. Well, I don't know. Well, that, that has been closed. They they just used it for filming uh, oh, the yeah. CBS Love Island, series right? Love Island. <laughs> yeah. I tried to watch that. It wasn't very entertaining. <laughs> but some people love it. My friends love it. So <laughs> It was visually appealing. It, yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> it, the whole city of Las Vegas was the backdrop. Yeah. But we're, we're either there or almost there, which is good yeah. news. It means that at least they're getting business, enough business to be like, it's worth opening. Right. And putting people back to work. Yep. So. Which is what we need. Mm-hmm. We need that here in Las Vegas. And our bars have been back open, which is great. Seems to be going just fine. So happy about that. Mm-hmm. Can't complain there. I mean, you know, we're getting there. I'm, what's not open? I'm trying to think. Like, like obviously, we don't have big events and shows. But, I mean, now we've got our some of our theaters, if they choose to be open. Most of our hotel casinos are open. Our restaurants are open. Our bars are open. Um so, so if you come back to Vegas, yeah. it, it will feel like Vegas again. Right. I mean, minus, you know, some of the big production shows. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can gamble. Mm-hmm. You can pull up to the bar. You can kind of go about your business right. and and feel like Vegas. And if you come in the next few months before <laughs> November, mm-hmm. you know, the pools will still be open too. Right. Yeah. So it, it's good. The wedding chapels are open. We saw our friend the other day who owns the yes. Graceland Wedding cha- Chapel, and he said, you know, things are getting back to normal. People are coming and getting married. I mean, it's never going to be right away what it used to be, but, you know, we're known for that too. So that's great. Well, One. and we, we don't obviously right now have a lot of the international travel because of the Mm -hmm. restrictions that are still in place. But there's a lot of uh, drive traffic coming in from Arizona, Utah, California. Mm -hmm. So a a lot of the surrounding uh, states have been feeding the the tourists Mm -hmm. that we've been seeing. Right. 
So thank you, drivers. Yeah. <laughs> and just a quick mention, because we, you know, sometimes we talk about our personal lives. Well, Sean and I, you know, this week we actually we hung out with Debbie Gibson, yeah, and and Matt Goss, <laughs> who's a headliner here in Las Vegas. Robin Anton, the creator of the Pussycat Dolls, and you know, everyone always asks, like, what are these guys open? Like, people don't know, like, are like with everything going on, like, do they still live here? Are they still what, what's going on? Well, Robin lives in L.A., but she has a, a great dance studio there. But because L.A. can't open indoor you know, venues yet. She's been hanging out a lot in Vegas. So, and doing a bunch of stuff, getting the Pussycat Dolls ready to go back on the reunion tour. Um, you had a long chat with Debbie Gibson. Yeah. About what she's been up to. And she's just creating music, doing a lot of podcasts, uh, doing Zooms. And and I think she's getting ready to, to release some new music. So yeah, that's cool. And that's what it sounded like. She was really excited mm-hmm. uh, about the music that she's been able to create during uh, this quarantine lockdown mm-hmm. period. Period, right. and um, she's also been working on some acting projects, and she's been she's been keeping busy, right? And it was <laughs> it was I was like, man, <laughs> did you even slow down I know. one bit? I it's, know it sounds like she just has so many irons in the fire, which is exciting. But it was her new music; she just lit up, and she's so excited about the new music she has coming. I know, and it's great for some of these people. They have pianos in their house, so they can actually create at home, which is kind of cool. Debbie has a, a piano inside, or actually, former Liber- Liberace's former one of his pianos. She she bought years ago, or won at an auction. I forget how it, how it went down, but she's got that, so she's always creating. And then we were at Matt Goss's house. He's got a beautiful piano, and he's been writing new music and getting ready to release them. He's doing a lot of business um, with the UK because that's where he's from. Yep. But with the whole you know way we're doing things now with live streaming and zooms, all that business is able to kind of move on but you know missing not doing a show here in las vegas so uh, we'll interview matt coming up in one of our podcasts we'll interview debbie coming up eventually when we um, get around to it but just you know it was a fun party it was it was a great party <laughs> <laughs> you know whenever everyone's like hey want to want to have a cocktail and celebrate something we're in sure absolutely <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to talk with Rachel Smith after we take a quick break. And she's going to be filling us in on all of the new releases and her star interviews. You'll hear it all next on Vegas Revealed. Thanks for listening to Vegas Revealed. We want to remind you of all the ways you can stay in touch with us. And one of our big ones is Vegas-Revealed.com because on that website is all our information, all the ways that you can listen to the podcast, and also links to all of our social media. And we put up some some great Las Vegas-related stories that and the happenings going on around town, so be sure to check that out. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as we're out and about. That's where you'll see what we're up to. And of course, our YouTube page. Yeah, we've got it all, folks. Go to Vegas-Revealed.com and see what we're all about. Our guest this week is a name and face that is very familiar in Las Vegas and beyond. Rachel Smith is an Emmy Award-winning entertainment journalist and host who is based here in Vegas. And as a voting member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, she has traveled the world to interview Hollywood's top stars like Tom Cruise, Charlize Theron, even Meryl Streep, and Cher. And for over a decade, Rachel and I were co-hosts of a very popular Las Vegas entertainment news show. Oh yeah, now that movie theaters are opening up across the country again and there are new releases to talk about, well, there are also new releases that are streaming straight to our homes. We're excited. Rachel Smith, it's great to have you here. Woohoo! Thanks for having me, Dana. Sean, so good to see you guys. Yes. How are you, my friend? We're all casual. Doesn't this feel good? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, casual. It's like it's a new, like, you know, COVID casual, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, how's everything going? Doing really well. I'm great seeing you guys. It's been a while, so it's great seeing you in person. In person. And bonus, we get to see Sean's uh, puppy, who's part of the podcast, but not seen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, so, but Sawyer gives kisses, Sawyer. which is nice. I, I know, Sawyer. I know. Well, it's so cool. You've had an opportunity to interview so many incredible people through the years. And recently, with new stuff coming out, they're still you know, wanting you to interview these folks and get the word out about new series that are streaming, new movies. It's amazing because obviously the theaters just recently reopened, but people are still a little cautious and concerned. So there's been so many great movies that were intended for theaters that are streaming on Netflix, on Amazon Prime, or video on demand. So families have never been home more than right now. And to have this new material and new entertainment has been great. And some of these movies and shows have been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our 
famous Las Vegas residence is, of course, Mike Tyson, Iron Mike. And there's a new biopic that's in the works about his life with uh, Jamie Foxx yeah. in a starring role. Love Jamie Foxx, who, by the way, used to be a resident of Las Vegas for years. I don't think I knew that. Really? I've lived here for a long time. Yeah, I had no idea Jamie Foxx used to live here. Oh, he loves it. Every time we talk to Jamie Foxx for years now, over a decade, he always brings up his great times in Las Vegas. And because of that, you know, he knows Mike Tyson very well. And it's interesting because he had this huge hit movie, uh, P- Project Power, on Netflix this mm-hmm. summer. But what I want to know about is the upcoming Mike Tyson biopic and he told me about getting close to Mike but also having an embarrassing moment once when he was on stage that involved the former champ. Take a listen. I've known Mike for, for years. I was on stage my, I was on stage years ago and I went to do my Mike Tyson joke and nobody laughed because Mike Tyson was in the audience. And somebody yelled out and said, yo, yo, he in here. And I was like, oh, snap. And a black girl in the front was like, what you gonna do? You scared? And I was like, hey, don't get it started. And they said, do the joke, but it better be funny. So I did the joke, got a standing ovation. Mike comes up to me, there he is. Come here, you're so crazy. Come on, I want you to hang out with me. Come, come on, let's go ahead and start hanging out. So, you know, I've been hanging out with him. So I got a chance to watch his growth. I got a chance. We grew up together in a sense. So you can see that Mike was not mad at him joking about I him. I love that. <laughs> oh, my god! But really, I mean, he said Mike has got to slow down because this movie is going to be eight hours long because Tyson <laughs> doesn't slow down. He keeps having, you know, shows on Broadway. He keeps, you know, cre- dividing himself. And mm-hmm. so it's that's going to be a really good one to watch for next year. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because he has this one man show. I've seen it twice here in Las Vegas. Once when it was at MGM Grand and then, well, and then he was also in MGM Grand down just a different theater. But um, I always thought, like, I wonder who's going to go see this, who's going to be interested. But the theater was always packed and a lot of men interested in his life story. And and what a story he has to tell and the way that he tells it. He just doesn't hide anything. He just, he's really himself. And how about those pictures of Fox getting buff? Yeah. I mean, because he's been posting on Instagram, like, getting, you know. Yeah former heavyweight champ tough so the biceps are coming in he's always been a fit guy but I think Jamie is a perfect person to perfect. play Iron Mike I would have when I'm sitting there thinking like who would, and then you said Jamie Foxx I was like perfect I mean Sean McAllister could do the role no. but I don't know if he's got, he doesn't have that left hook yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if the uh, resemblance is uncanny <laughs> enough yeah um, but uh, another uh, big release is on Netflix and it's a project starring Millie Bobby, uh, Millie Bobby Brown who of course everybody knows from Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh Millie Bobby Brown is probably one of the hottest young stars out there also one of the most inspirational because this is a movie that was as she said was destined for the cinema which mm-hmm. they say you know in the UK but this was going to be a huge big blockbuster movie which of course in current times they decided let's release it on Netflix let families see it this is a family friendly film Film. And it's so great because it's about Enola Holmes, who is Sherlock Holmes' younger sister. Oh. And uh, Sherlock in the movie, played by the always handsome Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. But this is all about Enola. And Millie Bobby Brown is such a great young female superhero feminist role model in this because she's smart, she's capable, she's resourceful. And it all kind of starts with this adventure of finding her mom, who's played by Helena Bottom Carter, who disappears, and then the game is afoot. A week ago, I awoke. Mother? To find that my mother was missing, and she did not return. I'm presently on the way to collect my brothers, Mycroft and Sherlock. Yes, Sherlock Holmes. The famous detective, my genius brother. He will have all the answers. And Nola. So such a fun movie, right? And everyone knows her, of course, from Stranger Things. Well, and David Harbour, her co-star on Stranger Things, just got married here to Lily Collins in Las Vegas at one of the little wedding chapels, the Graceland Wedding Chapel, Mm -hmm. I believe. Did she talk about that at all? Absolutely. I mean, it was so fun. I mean, they had In-N-Out burgers and had, you know, Elvis marry them. So I asked Millie, you know, your co-star just got married in Vegas. I know she's not 21, but what's the wildest thing that she's ever done in Vegas? And this is what she told me. The craziest thing I've done in Vegas is um, uh, watch the fountain show, um, which is a very, very fun experience to anyone who's ever experienced it. If not, it's a fountain show with lights and music, and it's very riveting. 
Oh, honey, if the Bellagio <laughs> fountains are the wildest thing that you've done, you, you got some other living to do. I know, got to get out. <laughs> Either oh, she's just it. a very well uh, trained, uh, you know, young actress who knows not to give up too much, or <laughs> she just needs to come back when she's a little bit older, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, my God. But there's a great movie. I loved it. Nola Holmes on Netflix right now, and they're already talking about sequels. Okay. And now let's talk The Boys in the Band. I keep seeing promos for this. Is This, this is on Netflix already, right? Just it, released? Just released. And by the way, Sean has a great connection. Not only did you see it on Broadway, Sean, but one of the stars in the film, Tuck Watkins, is a personal friend, right? Yeah, that's right. I've known Tuck for, for years and had the opportunity to, to go and see uh, the boys in the band when the play was on Broadway. It was celebrating the 50th anniversary of the play and the revival came out with an all-star cast. They won a Tony Award for it. And now I'm excited to see them, uh, see what they do with it on the screen. Absolutely. And knowing you guys are friends, the first thing I had to say when I was talking to Tuck and Matt Bomer and the cast was... Say hello to uh, Tuck from Sean, uh, and uh, uh, Tuck had a, a, ch- a little cheeky response. <laughs> oh my goodness! I remember Sean. Um, he uh, came to a couple of Mark Cherry's uh, infamous or well infamous pool parties. So please tell him I said hi. Ooh, pool parties! Why weren't Rachel and I invited? <laughs> Listen, so <laughs> we could have carpooled or something. Infamous, infamous pool parties. <laughs> I have a friend in LA who used to be the casting director for Desperate Housewives. Ooh, he fancy, he fancy Dana. Mark Cherry <laughs> was the guy who created Desperate Housewives. So I, I think it was a Fourth of July party. Mm. Dana, is he blushing or uh, is yeah. he just like sun? Uh, Sean's got more stories. That was another podcast for another day, right? Oh, he laid out in the sun this morning. It's sunburn. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sun kissed, not blushing. But honestly, this cast so amazing, right? Yeah, and now Ryan Murphy. Um, I watched Hollywood. So good. Uh, that was good. I didn't love it. I watched The Politician. It was good, but I didn't love it. But we've talked about this before. I don't. I don't know if I love, love, love his work. But, but I like. But I will watch it. Let's put it that way. But it's it's not. It's done in a certain way, don't you think? That kind of appeals to. He definitely has a style, and I like that he is always very inclusive. He definitely has a message of representation matters. And what I like talking to this cast is they kind of call themselves like the Gay Justice League because these are nine openly out actors who not only took these roles on Broadway, but now have come together to recreate this for, you know, for Netflix, for the movie. And really, this is the 50-year anniversary, as Sean said, of this groundbreaking movie that came out in the 70s. And I asked Matt Bomer, what does this mean to today's LGBTQ movement? One of the most refreshing things about doing this on stage is that you get to have, interact with people of all ages um, and backgrounds backstage after the show. And I was so blown away by, I, I guess I kind of expected it from my generation and maybe an older generation, but I was so moved when younger people would tell me how much the story meant to them and how much they didn't know about the story. And, and how much certain aspects of it still res- resonated with them, that they had friends who were like some of these characters, that they, they had parties that they'd be at where somebody would read somebody else, you know, it was sort of, you know, same script, different cast kind of stories that I would hear. So um, I would hope that a younger generation would see this and, and, and realize that today, as Tuck said, we have an all openly gay cast telling the story, and but also to have some gratitude for how far we've come and the people like Mark Crowley and this original cast who had the courage to tell this story 50 years ago and on the shoulders of, of whom we stand as artists today. Yeah, and I think the message of the film is just as relevant now as it ever has been, and it can really be applied across the board, whether you're LGBTQ or not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because there is a message and a powerful one of that in the movie, but also it's highly entertaining. I mean, there's even, listen, I love any movie that has a breakout musical number. I know. And they did a whole dance number to Heat Wave, you know, and Jim Parsons, I'm like, honey, you've got some moves. He's like, oh, Lord, don't make me, you know, Jim Parsons, he's so funny. Don't make me dance again. By the way, he he said he hopes when Vegas reopens, the one show he'll be dancing at first is Lady Gaga. Oh, that's the one he wants to come back to cool. first. Of yeah. Well, listen, they're easy on the eyes, and this looks like a fantastic. It does look like a fantastic uh, movie to watch. So I'm excited about it. 
And uh, John Cusack is another one who has a, a new project coming out on Amazon Prime, right? Yes, this is such an engrossing, compelling, and timely a series. It's called Utopia. And basically, it also stars Rain Wilson. It's from the writer Gillian Flynn of Gone Girl, who gave us, so you know it's going to be good suspense and twists and turns. But what's really interesting about Utopia is it's based on this graphic novel that kind of predicts a superbug or pandemic. So when they shot wow. this series... You know, over a year ago in Chicago, the stars, when things start happening in real life and unfolding, they were completely in disbelief because it's so surreal. A fictional story actually kind of came to pass with today's events. And here's what John Cusack had to say about that. Yeah, surreal is the right word. It really is the right word. Um, you know, the, the themes of dystopic um, dystopia and uh, climate change and kind of the fact that... Um, you know, the world is so lost in materialism that it's kind of heading over the abyss. That's been in fiction and movies and art for, for a while. And people can see that coming. But um, I don't think when we started it, we thought that it would mirror reality quite so much. Wow, that is a little eerie, huh? Yeah, it is. It really is, because, I mean, this material was written a long time ago, so who could have predicted? And, of course, this is sci-fi, this mm -hmm. is fiction. This also is not for kids, just to point that out. Okay. There's a lot of dark themes, there's violence, but it's very compelling, and it's a series you can watch one after the other, very binge-worthy. Okay. Wow, yeah. that uh, It does look good, that's for sure. And I love John Cusack. I know, don't I, you? I, I do. I mean, he's been, well, you know, we're getting older, so he's been around for a long time, and I've seen a lot of his stuff uh, when he was young. 28 is not old, Dana! <laughs> My mom always told me that it's not how old I am, it's how young the boys I date. Oh, right. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry, you can edit that later. <laughs> but no, it's interesting too, you know, John Cusack, such a fan. He loves Chicago. Mm -hmm. They shot the show there. Uh, Gillian Flynn also from Chicago. But I had to ask him too. I said, um, you know, you love Chicago sports teams. And what does he think about Vegas becoming a sports town? And he was just so excited. Like, finally, I was worried about all the gambling stuff you guys had to get through. But Feels like you guys figured it out and can't wait to see, you know, the Bears take on the Raiders at Legion Stadium. Yeah, absolutely. We figured it out. Oh. It's yeah, we did. to have football and <laughs> hockey no. and basketball. It's great. Right? It is. I mean, and you know, one thing uh, that we were talking about earlier is, you know, how, how things have changed over the last seven months, obviously. But something I'm missing, I'm really, like, we're missing the shows in Vegas, but we're also kind of missing the red carpets, right? I mean, for years and years, Sean, you and Rachel have both been on, you know, red carpets. And I don't know if, if there's any maybe moments that you wanted to talk about or share with some of our listeners of some really cool vegas -y red carpet moments that uh that you'll always remember you know what i think it's been there's so many years of covering whether it's the acms or the billboard music awards i mean there's been so many award shows that have come to vegas but i'll never forget i think sean was it in 2016 when bts which is now oh i mean God, the, yes. the arguably listen, i love backstreet boys but yeah. right now bts the biggest boy oh band gosh. in the world i mean their following is huge and it was their very first red carpet ever in the United States. Some of them, their very first time in our country. Mm -hmm. And so when we interviewed them, we're just seeing all these like fans lining up. We're like, who are they here for? Are they here for, you know, Ariana, Imagine Dragons? They were all there for BTS. So that was our first introduction. And weren't they so gracious? Oh, they, they were amazing. They wow. were amazing. We were standing there like, I mean, this was, this was back in 2016. We were like, so who are these kids? <laughs> He's like, what's K-pop? <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't, we hope no one's, none of their fans are listening. We'll get hate. They are like, they have hardcore fans. Oh, like hard. And I'm one of them. Have you heard Dynamite, their uh. new video? <laughs> Oh my gosh, Dynamite. No, I haven't seen it. <gasps> what? Oh my god, we're okay. gonna fix that immediately. After this okay. is done, Dana, we're playing it. It's their okay. first English language video. It has broken the internet, like more than even Kim Kardashian mm -hmm. did with her booty. Wow, because really? They it is now listen, I don't know how there's like so many guys. There's usually five guys of formula in a boy band, but they think they have seven. But they all dance, they all sing. They're very highly produced. But this video. Da you never heard Dynamite? Dynamite. No. It, it, Where it have I been? You okay. have to like insert a little oh my gosh. and put it on the licensing agreement for that. But but so good. I'm a big BTS. I think BTS and BSB mm. should get together and do something. Backstreet Boys. I mean, listen, their show at Planet Hollywood was still to this day one of my favorites. Yes, and I didn't Dana, expect I it. I you. didn't even expect it to be. Like I was like, oh, I like Backstreet Boys, you know, but I was more of a new kids on the block girl. But the, like that show was great. So good. And yeah. actually, before they left, I hosted some fan event because the guys came to know that I was obviously a very loyal fan. I have a PhD in boy bands. And they said if they're invited back, they would love to come back and return. I mean, AJ's doing Dancing with the Stars, mm -hmm. and they have some solo projects. But I think hopefully when things reopen, we can 
you know, welcome back, our boys. Yes, I hope so. Planet Hollywood is opening back up, and we just need to get our theaters back open and then see who's going to return, you know? It's all we, out there. We want everybody to return. Yeah, we that's do. That's the goal. Everybody. everybody and Sean return. wants Carrie Underwood to one day come here, too. Oh, that's his, I would that, love that. That's his boy. That's his uh, back and of the boys. Dolly Parton. <gasps> I want Dolly to yeah, Dolly's have great. a residency. I think I have some inside info that she might. So <gasps> yeah, yeah, I know someone that works with her that said it might possibly be in the work. So we'll see. By the way, wasn't that a great moment when we had Dolly do an interview yes. with us? Yes. Because they were, you know, She's just the rushing best. her in like the last four or five minutes before the award show. They've got to get the stars in. And, and so her publicist was looking at us like, sorry, guys, it's the last interview. We've got to move her in. And I was like. Like, I'm like praying, like, just oh. one question. And so he was trying to move her along. And then Dolly goes, well, wait a little second. I'm not going to pass up this little girl. She's been sitting here for two minutes uh-huh. just pray- just begging for an interview. Yeah. She says, it, if you want to talk to me, well, darling, I sure do want to talk to you. Oh, wow. Well, you're good at impersonating her. That was good. <laughs> she did. She did. Oh, my God. And years ago when we interviewed her for uh, Joyful Noise with Queen Latifah, because she's, like, tiny. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, Dolly, how are you so small? She goes, well, honey, I haven't had a carb since 1970. Oh my gosh. So that's my problem, carbs. Yeah. I'm like, man, I could never, I couldn't survive. No way. No way. Okay, before you go, Rachel, I have to ask you about the latest Tom Cruise news. What's going on with Top Gun 2? Do oh you gosh. know? Well, I'm dying. Well, you know that they pushed it back till next, you know, yeah. summer now. No, it's, yeah, they keep moving it further and further away. I know. And I, listen, but like I love the Backstreet Boys and I love Tom Cruise, but Dana and I your love, mom. I love and my mom. Love. I love Tom Cruise. And you should, because I know a lot of people out there have all these ideas about. I know. But all I can ever judge is my experiences and how I see them not only treat me, but the people who bring in their sandwich or do their makeup mm-hmm. or the fans that wait for hours. And I have to tell you, in 15 years of doing this, and I've been, I mean, Tom doesn't do things small, so I've gone on some amazing trips. I mean, Tom. Maybe, oh, she, Tom. Said, she calls him on a first see? name basis. No, yeah. I mean, Tom. I mean, <laughs> Mr. Cruz. What do we say, you know? <laughs> but he doesn't do things. We've gone to, you know, Spain. We've gone to, like, you know, Austria. We've gone all over the world with these, you know, movie junkets and premieres. And he shows up so early so he can literally talk to fans for hours. Mm-hmm. And then when he does a red carpet, sometimes stars, like, well, they'll do some interviews with, you know, the big national networks, but then they have to get in. He, if you're on that red carpet, he is going to stop and do an interview with every single journalist there. And I think he really cares. I mean, he's one of those stars, I think, that cares what people think, wants to be, you know, like, grateful for mm-hmm. all the fan support. And I think Maverick, this uh, sequel, is going to be so good. I think it's going to be so out now good. the 4th of July weekend around his birthday. It'll be great. Yeah. But I think they just started shooting the next Mission Impossible with Christopher McQuarrie. So. Okay. Yeah, I think Tom really enjoys what he does, and he's very grateful. And I think that you can see the appreciation in his work. You but still we just, have his poster up on your wall, don't um, you? No, but um, maybe in my closet where no one can see it. I mean, listen, that, that vibe, listen, back in the day, oh, yeah. I was like very young. I didn't know what was happening when I was watching that movie because I was like, I don't know, middle school. But I was like... Why am I enjoying this so much? Yeah. Like that volleyball scene was like, oh, yeah. it's so good. Like it just, if you haven't seen it, go Google it. I know. Thank well, I mean, me who hasn't, right? But yeah, I mean, I, no, I really do like him as an actor. I like his movies. I'm waiting for him to at least win one Oscar. Right? I mean, come on. I know. Anyway. I think sometimes he doesn't get the credit, but if you really look at the definition of movie star, and we use it, listen, I'm guilty of it. We use it way yes. too much. Tom Cruise is a bona fide movie, movie star, star. For sure. And when you, it's funny too, like face to face, like, He's just got that charismatic mm-hmm. smile and personality. Mm-hmm. And you might only be talking for two minutes, but mm-hmm. those are your two minutes. He's not looking around to see if someone bigger or better is you know, coming up. He gives you that attention. Mm-hmm. So, And he'll use your name. He does do that. He's oh, really good. I like that. So, oh, Rachel, this is nice. You know, oh. He always compliments you and puts the focus. Cute. He's smart. <laughs> All right. Well, cute. Dana, not Dana, not Dana's blushing. Open. You got the same tan as uh, Sean does. I know, I know. On I know. that dreamy note. I know. Rachel, thank you so much thank for joining Thank you guys us. for having me. It's always great to see you and uh, have your insights on all things entertainment. Mm-hmm. And um, don't be a stranger. Come back whenever you want. I'd love to. Thank yep. you guys for having me so much. You all got right. it. Thanks, Rach. Stay with us. Vegas Revealed is back after this, and we'll have our two secret tips. Welcome back. It's time for Sean and Dana's secret tips. And something we wanted to talk about today is we're actually recording on October 1st. And uh, for anyone who's listening from outside of Las Vegas or in Las Vegas, you probably know what happened here three years ago on this day, um, you know, mass shooting right across from Mandalay Bay. It was the Route 91 Music Festival. 
Uh, 58 people were killed. Now that number has been up to 60 and so many people injured and just the whole area and really the whole country was affected by this. Yeah. And there were so many people from out of town who were here for that concert and who unfortunately lost their lives in in that shooting. But uh, one October is uh, forever going to be a day in Las Vegas that just carries so much emotion and people Mm -hmm. in Las Vegas and outside of Las Vegas have been impacted in so many different ways uh, by what happened here. And uh, mm-hmm. there is, if if you are, um, you know, coming to Las Vegas and do want to remember those people, there is a, a healing garden mm-hmm. in downtown Las Vegas that was created uh, to keep the memories of uh, those who we lost alive. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, if you just want to take a moment, uh, reflect, remember the victims, or just see what they have done up there, because that was such a community effort. I remember yeah. literally they started creating that like on the day of the shooting later in the day. Like, what can we do? Because people just wanted to help. Everyone in our community was like, okay, what can I do? Can I donate blood? Can I help create this memorial? What can we do? to um, help people who were affected. I would feel like people were like, I feel like I'm affected because I live here, but I need to help others. And it was such a, it, it was a dark, dark day, but there were so many bright spots when it came to everyone coming together. So this garden, I know you recently were on a bike ride and you said that you stopped there and it was beautiful. Yeah, it was the first time that uh, I'd actually been to the garden. I'd you know seen it so many times in in news coverage and seen pictures on social media. But uh, just walking through there and um, seeing the the little memorials mm-hmm. that family members have put up with the pictures of uh, the the victims of mm-hmm. that shooting, and it's it is just such a a serene and beautiful place and you can feel that it was created with so much love right and that energy and that spirit you can feel there yeah i mean it was a a terrible day but like i was saying there were so sometimes when there's a shooting there are a lot of people that are killed or injured that are from your town it happens in your town but we like you mentioned had so many people that were visiting at that time and so so it's a great place. We, we are happy to have a place that we can remember them, honor them, and um, a place that you can go to. So we wanted to mention that. Anyway, it's in downtown Las Vegas and easy to get to, and it's it's really pretty. If you get a chance, go check it out. And just another note on that, I, I think the, the memory that just will, will always stick out to me is how the city of Las Vegas reacted mm-hmm. to that uh, unthinkable uh, occurrence. Um, I was reporting live at uh, one of the blood banks where people were just flooding the blood bank, just wanting to donate and do something. And people were driving by, dropping off supplies, yeah. dropping off food. Water. Dro- yeah. it, was, it was unbelievable, the outpouring. And um, I, I think that really showed what Las Vegas is made of at its core. Right, I agree. And 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 at the time, we were both in local news, and someone just wrote me a message today. I said, I remember your coverage, and I just stuck with you, and we were captivated. It was so nice to have people who knew our town, and we were just glued to the TV, and it just it, it felt good to be able to be a source of information for yeah. people. And that really is one of the the moments that I'll always remember in my career. And I feel like even um, I left TV a year ago and I feel like, you know, after one October, it, it almost was, it was time to, to go. So, so it just happened to all, you know, fall into place that way. But, but we were all trying to do something. And I know you feel if you were at the blood bank, you know, and, and me on TV in the studio mm-hmm. felt, felt useful, felt like we were doing something, which was good. Yeah, it, it was it just a, it, it gives me, yeah. chills all over even mm-hmm. even thinking about it but um there was so much good that came of that yeah so that's that's one of our tips a place that you may not know about is the, something that you could visit another tip that we had we mentioned earlier in the podcast that park mgm is now open and that's right next to t-mobile arena and kind of new york new york and when we were talking about that sean was like oh is Italy open so we uh. immediately looked it up and yes Italy is back open and that's one of your favorite spots and a lot of people don't really know about it so tell us so Italy is this big italian it's kind of, it's not an open air uh, 
Italian mm-hmm. marketplace, but it feels like that because it's like this big glass atrium and it's little, I guess I'll, the best way to describe it is a bunch of little uh, kiosks inside. There's one uh, place where you can get pizza. There's one where you can get fresh seafood. There's one where you can pick your your cut of meat right out of the, oh, the butcher so case. Good. There's uh, the cheeses. Oh my gosh. There's the Aperol stand. There's yeah. d- the wine bar. There's d- oh, and everything the dessert row. Italian. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the dessert row is amazing. So it's like a, a you can go and basically construct your meal. Like yeah. I want pizza from here. I want a side of pasta from this place, right? Like but, I want to try a glass of wine from this one. But the amazing thing is that, yes, you can get prepared foods already for you, but they have a marketplace in there too where you can get all of the ingredients that all of those little restaurant stands use mm-hmm. and you can make your own Italian meal at home if you want to. Oh, so great. every ingredient that they use in those little takeout restaurants in Italy, they have all of the ingredients down at the marketplace, even the wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and anything that you get there, you can you can buy it and take it home and create your own Italian meal too. Yeah, and if and if you walk through there, you'll notice they do have like a lot of products that like you can't get anywhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're looking for, I don't know, like say you grew up in New York City and you're like, I always used to use this kind of whatever spice or whatever. The odds are they probably have it because they have all that stuff. Oh. And you can so buy good. it. So good. And the cannolis. Oh, so mm. good. Yeah. It's it's a great, it's a fun place. It's almost because it's like if sometimes you want to go out to eat and you want to be planted, but maybe you want a little bit of an experience. It kind of creates that, you know? So Italy is back open. It's in Park MGM. Go in there, check it out. Even if you just want to get one thing or you want to try them all, um, it is open for business. And, and they said the market's open too. And that's what we like to hear. Open for business. Yes. And increasingly, Las Vegas is, is getting that way. Now we're just waiting for the big production production shows to get back up and running. So we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. So thanks everyone for joining us again. Um, actually, we celebrated International Podcasting Week this week. So, hey, big shout out to all our international listeners. We'll be back next week with another Vegas Reveal. Oh,